Man on a carnivore diet starts oozing cholesterol from his skin. The media has been binging on this story over the last week like a hungry lion with a fresh kill. Does a carnivore diet make you ooze cholesterol? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. You may have heard of this report about a man oozing cholesterol from a carnivore diet and I thought it'd be good to talk about that. And I'm reviewing a video by Nick Norwitz who reviewed the study. So it's a reacts video to Nick Norwitz, who's a medical student at Harvard who does videos all the time. And we'll see what he says. Be sure to wait till the end to hear my final comments. It may not be what you expect. Man on a carnivore diet starts oozing cholesterol from his skin. The media has been binging on this story over the last week like a hungry lion with a fresh kill. But sadly, this medical case report, the medical case report at the center of the story, it reads more like a Monty Python skit than a proper report. In my opinion, this report is an embarrassment, a big misstep, and actually ammunition for the carnivore diet movement that will only serve to widen the chasm of trust between the general public and conventional medicine. So Nick's going to get into the effects of these headlines and really kind of debunk this situation that was described, and rightly so. But some people do notice cholesterol deposits under their skin if their cholesterol goes up. And we need to discuss how common that is and whether it's a cause for a concern. Now back to the oozing. I want to thank our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element has a great mixture of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, everything you need on a keto diet. But specifically, this raw, unflavored version, which is labeled with a blue, teal-colored banner. This teal-colored, raw, unflavored version does not contain stevia, sugar, or any additives except a science-backed mix of three electrolytes our bodies need in quantities that have been already measured out for you. This is great for a keto diet, but most important thing is that it tastes great. As you know, electrolytes are really important, especially if you're following a keto or a carnivore diet. Element is offering you a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packages, free with any order. That's a great way to try it out and to share Element with a friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. This offer is only available at my link, drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. You'll find that in the description below. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. This is harmful, and let me make that case starting by reviewing the medical case report published in JAMA Cardiology. Here it is. Here is the entire report. You're seeing it on screen. It describes the patient only as a man in his 40s, providing no other pertinent medical, genetic, family, or other history. But here's the kicker. It vaguely claims he was eating six to nine pounds of cheese, butter, and hamburger daily and losing weight. So there are either two possibilities. One, Either this report is inaccurate as written, or the subject in question is the fat man from Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Well, I remember years ago with case studies and, and all the, the doctors, if they have an agenda to call the Atkins diet out for being bad or here the carnivore diet, the doctors would just say, you know, what are you doing? And if a patient said the Atkins diet, they would trust it. They would take it at face validity when what does that mean? What here, what does carnivore diet mean? And and they would never look into the detail of what that person was eating because, well, they didn't really know what it was. And the prejudgment, the prejudice is that it was bad. And so I've seen case study after case study of someone doing low carb, keto, you know, and having all these bad results, but we never see in that case study what they were eating, what they were doing. Were they on other medications? Were they, did they have other medical issues? 
If it were a drug, the drug companies have actually come up with a set of criteria to be sure that the drug actually caused that problem. You see, there's no one to stick up for the Atkins or carnivore or, or, you know, but we can still learn from the drug companies. So the drug companies basically said, you know, you can't just accuse the drug. You have to have the set of criteria, like, was there a blood level? You know, so is this person in ketosis? Is there a blood level of the drug? Um, is there any evidence of re-giving the drug causing the same side effects? So the idea of re-challenging that, so here in this case, you could take someone off the diet, see if the whatever it is resolves, and then you put them back on the diet or whatever they were doing to see if that problem comes back. It could be that it was something totally unrelated. And so you can look up the pharmacoepidemiology, which is the, the drug companies have put up these kind of criteria for dismissing any sort of relationship between the drug and an outcome or side effect, because of course there's profit there to protect the drug, but also the idea that it needs to be scientific not just that some kind of report like this. Now, let me explain the real issue here. N equals one case reports, they're fine. They can have value, including as cautionary tales. And I also don't subscribe to the idea that there is one best human diet. And I do fully believe there are genetic susceptibilities that could be contraindications for a carnivore diet. However, this is supposed to be a top cardiovascular journal, JAMA Cardiology, but the report as it's written, is sloppy, devoid of really important details, and pretty much implausible. What is going to happen? Correction, what is happening? Because I see it in real time. Those who conceive of a carnivore diet as a dangerous fad will wave this report like a cautionary flag without considering its merit or lack thereof. And those who are fans of the carnivore diet, or just even carnivore curious, will pick up on its clear and obvious deficits, which are clear to anyone who takes just two minutes and a handful of neurons to process the words on the page. And they'll inevitably conclude that conventional medicine and the science is corrupt, untrustworthy, and out to get them. If gem cardiology is wise, they'll retract it or update it. But I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, these are all great points. And the idea that I guess a lot of it is taken on faith. For example, you might think that it being in a journal like this, they have documented with affidavit the idea that this picture came from a human. It wasn't just deep faked and photoshopped. That's rarely done. In my experience, publications and journals are, are quite naive. That the so what you do is you ask the author to you know say, I agree that this is honest and, and it has high integrity and this is real and all that. And there's rarely any double checking for is this person have an agenda, some other reason? You know, why would a cardiology journal allow for a problem with carnivore and, and cholesterol in the hand? Well, it's because cholesterol is sort of the darling culprit for heart disease and atherosclerosis. And so the idea that a diet could make cholesterol go really high and come out on the skin is against what they think they're for, which actually has some nuance to it. Hang on. I'll also reinforce, while this case is an extreme example of low publication standards and bias, this is part of a pattern. I won't go into it too much in this video, but for more, start by seeing these two newsletters. And finally, to end this video on a lighter note and for some comic relief, here's some quotes from colleague physicians and medical students. I asked them to react to this report after they read it. And here's what they had to say. One doctor said, if I wrote this report as a first year medical student, my attending would have cut off my Another doctor said, this case report is so sloppy, they should put it between two burger buns and call it a sloppy joe. A medical student said, where's that nun from Game of Thrones with the shame bell? And one surgeon said, I'm no carnivore, but dang it if this isn't a feather in the carnivore community's cap. 
Is this really JAMA cardiology? Now, as my final words, let me say I don't fancy myself as a shield of the carnivore diet. Far from it. I have my questions and concerns. But here, I detect a deficiency of intellectual integrity in publishing double standards that will eat at public trust in medicine and science, like that lion eating its kill. Oh, thanks, Nick, for that. So uh, a couple of things come to mind, and, and that is, if there is an elevation in cholesterol in the blood, which is called lean mass hyper responder in the context of a keto diet, that might be harmful. And that is correlation, not causation in my mind, not in the traditional cardiologist mind and probably not the editors of JAMA cardiology. So they'll think anything that raises the cholesterol is going to be bad. And the new research on lean mass hyper responders isn't really showing that. The other thing is the correlation of the hand cholesterol. Let's say that that's real. So let's say Nick's criticism about what the person ate and all that is incorrect, but the person did eat a carnivore diet, maybe not that much, and did have this correlated with high cholesterol and skin eruptions, they're called. That's not necessarily the same problem as atherosclerosis. They don't necessarily go together. So if you have a skin eruption, and that was kind of an unusual look, most people have kind of a yellow, almost like a skin tag, but it's yellow under the eyes or some other place. The tendon manifestation is more like a lipoma or fatty tumor, but it, so it's hard and kind of nodular. It could be that the cholesterol level is high and it gets deposited in these areas, kind of like on a high carb diet with insulin resistance, you often get skin tags, these, these growths on the skin, and then those go away if you reverse the diabetes and insulin resistance. I have to say, in a very informal sort of approach, I've talked to people, thousands of people within Facebook groups and all, some people who do have the elevation of LDL from a low-carb diet do get a skin eruption of cholesterol or triglyceride more specifically, putting those two together. So it's possible that this happened from someone on a carnivore diet. The problem with case studies is we don't know how common that is. We don't know if it's one in a million, one in a hundred, one in a thousand. And then the idea that this causes the heart disease, it has to be separated because often the skin manifestations of the excessive, often the skin manifestations of the excessive cholesterol do not have the same atherosclerosis connotations. So you still want to look at the arteries, the calcium score, the, the ultrasound of the other large arteries. So that, you know, assuming that this did happen as a result of it, and assuming that this did happen as a result of it, I would want to see uh, someone going off the diet, or you can add back a little bit of carbs, or you can give a cholesterol blocker in the, the, as a pill, lower the cholesterol and see if the skin eruption goes away, rechallenge to raise the cholesterol to see if it happens. That's the requirement for proof that a drug has caused this kind of side effect. But I do think there are some people who do, among those who have elevated cholesterol and levels, will have some sort of skin manifestation, but I don't know how common that is. So let me know in the comments below if you've noticed with high cholesterol, any kind of skin manifestation. These are called xanthomas or xanthelasma, if you want to read about them on, on the Dr. Google, Google University. So thanks, Nick, for this. And, and yet it's possible while it was, it was a terrible case study. Uh, yeah, the JAMA cardiology should do a little better job. No, they need to do a better job gatekeeping for sure. If you like this, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and look for new videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.